start the recording and I'm going to let my husband, William Felder, introduce you. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going Happy to read Sabbath. The- Happy Sabbath. I'm going to read the bio of of Christina first. Christina has spent the last 10 years in Paris working as a bilingual journalist and has been employed by some of the industry's most renowned companies. Born in Uganda, she grew up in the UK and has hosted herself up, uh, hoisted herself up to a to native French level after attending the black, the black Heath high privilege private school in London. She studied French and English at Leeds University with a six-month teaching contract in Paris. That experience sparked her passion for French culture in her work. She strives to offer human interest stories, going beyond the facts rather than just reporting them. Her reporting has led her on assignments in the U.S., Africa, and Europe. She has notably been recognized for her coverage of the African continent. Today, she works for the African French service of Radio France International. She recently married her husband, John Sebastian Fender. She has been married, well, how long have you been married? About a year now, almost? No, no, this, this, this only happened in September. So oh yeah, six been months. A very busy six months. <laughs> yes, yeah, so a very busy six months. And how I met Christina was, as a Lyft driver, I was driving and I got a, I got a bean from somebody and yeah. it was her. <laughs> and so I picked her up and I was taking her to go find some Trumpsters is what she was looking for <laughs> yeah, that's true. because she's a reporter. And so she was looking for some Trumpsters to talk about what's going on with the election and also with some Biden people. And so <laughs> as we talked, I ended up driving her around for what, two or three days, basically yeah, yeah, yeah. driving around the city, just taking her around to different places, letting her meet different Trumpsters and Biden people. And the adventures was, was quite funny sometimes. Yeah. And so I asked her to speak on Friday Night Insight about who knows how long ago, but we finally got a chance to get her in because she's so busy. Yeah. And so, Christina, I want you to tell the people some of your adventures over the last six months, where you've right. been, the people you've seen, some of the war torn countries, or what's going on. Can you explain to us, starting back about six months? Well, I just want to say that um, uh, it's, it's been an incredible time and, and obviously meeting you, William, was one of the, uh, the highlights of, uh, of, of this last, uh, last six months. And, and, and I'm sorry it's taken so long to get here, but uh, you know, after the United States, I, I came back to Paris, I got promoted, uh, I joined a new, new service and I went straight to Ghana to cover the elections. But to, just to rewind on the U.S. trip, uh, what really sort of struck me was obviously the, the amazing people uh, uh, like William. It was a really random uh, encounter. I, I I'd called. A, I, I was using Uber a lot, and and, I, and one afternoon I just said like, you know, uh, God, I'm uh, I'm struggling. Uh, the elections are in, in, in a day's time, and I don't have a driver. Uh, the uh, the logistics was a real issue for me uh, on the assignment. And so one afternoon, I, 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 I call Uber and William sort of comes and picks me up and, and I say, well, look, we need to, I need to sort of find Trump supporters. My stories uh, are, are too one-sided. My editors aren't happy. Help me find uh, some you know, white Trump supporters because my editors were, were a little uncomfortable with the idea that I was only getting um, black, uh, black Americans and they were sort of trying to uh, typecast me as being... Uh, pro-militant and, and so William, he came on board and he sort of helped me uh, rebalance uh, my, my coverage and, and he knew all the right places to go. So, uh, so I, I, when I came back to Paris, I got a lot of positive, positive uh, feedback because uh, uh, you know, I, I had this, uh, this amazing, uh, amazing driver uh, who, who not only uh, yeah, took me to uh, the supermarkets, uh, but also sort of suggested to the right people to speak to. So, um, so like when I when I travel, usually what happens is I I, I meet people like William um, in journalism. We sort of call them fixers. So that they they basically fix everything for you. They fix the right uh, the right contacts, the right locations, uh, and and he sort of did that almost miraculously without me even asking. Uh, but you know the U.S. trip was was uh, was really like, like my. Uh, it, was, it was an eye opener and, and, and really, really taught me uh, to, you know, to rely on God because I, I went alone. Uh, I, should, I should have been uh, with, with another uh, colleague. He counts the last minute. So I, 
I was out there for like maybe two weeks uh, and I was, I was helped every single day along the way just, just by you know, the presence of, of God and and I, I really sort of you know, uh, give give thanks to, to um, give thanks to, to the Lord for, for for helping me and protecting me. And when I came back, uh, so the the stakes were even higher because when I moved into this uh, uh, this this new company, I'm now working uh, completely in French. So I, I've had to sort of switch from English, uh, go, go back into French. Um, I studied French. In it. Uh, the beforehand, but I, I'm a bit rusty. So I was like, oh my goodness, father, like I, I've got all of this pressure on my shoulders. I'm going to cover you know, this election. I, I haven't had any time to prepare. Uh, and again, uh, I, I go to Ghana and I meet an, an amazing fixer this time, like a, a driver and also another driver like William, but um, we also had a great context. And, and, and Ghana was, was really just, again, taught me that, you know, I can, uh, I'm not alone, and, and no matter where I go, uh, God is just carrying me and looking out for me. Uh, you know, I step into a new, a new country, a new location, there's the, uh, everything's already prepared. Um, so it doesn't matter how amazing my itinerary might be, uh, I, I, get, I get on the ground and it turns out way better than, than anything I could ever have planned. So, uh, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that my trips are always full of surprises and, and the, the older I get, the more I, I realize that I, I can't control everything and, and that there's no point in trying because, uh, because you know, God is, is a way better um, way maker and planner than, than, than I uh, ever will be. Um, so, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's uh, that's sort of what the last six months have been and uh so like i literally finished the us came back uh i didn't have time to train in this new company in this new service uh i stayed for a week uh and then i i left uh to go to accra and, and i spent two weeks there again and 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 now it's in the last few weeks i've only been i've only managed to get my breath back slowly and and i'm learning the ropes and and how and how the service functions, but but I, I didn't have any of this information when I when I left uh, on on assignment. But but it, it, it turned out to, it went very well, and 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 I came back again to 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 applause and and praise people were like wow that was that was amazing because because God just opened so many doors and and made a and made the assignment happen. So uh, so yeah, I am I, I I was thrilled by by the exposure and, and, and also just, uh, just, just really relieved that, <laughs> that he, he covered me and, and protected me uh, throughout. Um, and, and I think that there's a huge difference between uh, my travel experience today and perhaps a few years back. Um, I recall in, when was it, maybe in 2016, I was covering the, uh, so I do a lot of politics, uh, I'm a sort of a political uh, economics uh, journalist and so uh, in 2016 I was in Uganda, I'm, I'm Ugandan of origin and I was covering uh, those elections and um, and I was and I really just I, again I wasn't I wasn't really prepared but I, I didn't really have also the, the strong spiritual um, background and leaning that, that I have today so I I went on this trip uh, with other female journalists and and there was one experience w which was quite um, unpleasant. Uh, we were covering uh, a political rally of the, the president Yari Museveni, and and we sort of noticed that uh, he uh, basically we, we saw all of these um, trucks sort of lined up or, or, or sort of coming in to this huge field where the uh, um, where the uh, where the, uh, the rally was taking place and. And we, and we saw, we were thinking, okay, this is interesting. Like, where, where are all these people coming from? So we went to sort of ask questions, me and my uh, female colleague, uh, she's, um, she's uh, American. Uh, and we asked questions to, to these, um, uh, these supporters of the president. And they're saying, well, well yes, you know, we, we basically can't have come here because uh, we were paid to do so. Uh, the president is, um, is paying my, my uh, son's child uh, um, school fees. Uh, he's paid treatment for my for my mother, so 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 why would I not come? Uh, and so we're thinking, well, you know, this is this is vote buying, you know, this is this is illegal. 
uh, uh, this is this is not right. Um, but as soon as I finished recording the interview, uh, I, I sort of see like a group of, well, not a group, but a, a, like a few um, uh, almost henchmen or like really, really, uh, really strong um, sort of security guards who sort of come towards me and and they want to sort of confiscate my equipment and and all I see are their like huge rifles and and and, and their guns just sort of pointing at me. I'm like, whoa, uh, like this is this is this is really. Um, this is really scary, uh, and and these these secret security guards are talking to me, saying, "Well, you know, look, you know, you're you're Ugandan. Uh, you know, where's your patriotism? Uh, your female colleague, she's American. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter for her. You know, what she what she reports, what she writes. But you know, you as as Ugandan, uh, you know, think about what you're going to say. Uh, it, it could harm you know uh, your country and." And so he was, he was sort of trying to blackmail me into, uh, you know, not selling selling out my country. And uh, so it was, it was very it was it was a very uncomfortable experience because I'm looking at the gun and then <laughs> and uh, this sort of a uh, mind uh, this mind game that he was playing with me. And uh, and what sort of helped was basically my colleague stepped in and and she sort of calmed the situation down. And 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 they were they were going to confiscate our, our recording equipment, but she. She 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 talked them out of it, and we were able to get out of this um, this uh, this difficult situation. But um, but I think you know if if I'd been on that if 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 um, I had the same experience now, uh, I, I would handle it differently. I would have basically just called upon you know like God and said you know Father, I can't do this. Step in, help me. Uh, but I was so determined at that at that stage to do everything by myself, and it. it just backfired. So, um, uh, so yeah. So I basically now I I try to, you know, I'm I'm not perfect, and and I have still got you know, so much more to learn. But but uh, on the U.S. trip and in, in Ghana, like before going out or doing anything, I just sort of start the day like with prayer. If I was exhausted, I just sort of like sing something very very short. But I, I needed just to have. Uh, some connection uh, uh, with with God throughout throughout the uh, throughout the day, and, and that's what got me through. Um, and and I didn't have that uh, sort of five years ago for the Uganda elections. Um, but that being said, you know they still went well, and, and and God still supported me. But it was much more difficult. It wasn't as easy and successful as as it is now. So, uh, hey Christine, no one asked you a question. Mm -hmm. Did you um, in the United States? Mm -hmm. Did you find the the people who you asked questions to were they very contentious, or were they pretty nice, or what did you find out about it? Did, when you versus the Trumpsters versus the Biden mm -hmm. people? Well, the, the Biden people were very open, and there was there was no uh, no issue. Um, with, with the Trumpsters, I was I was a little a uh, little concerned and worried that. Uh, that, that would be hostile because you know I'm, I'm not a uh, I, I sound British uh, I've got a British accent but you know I'm, I'm not blonde and blue eyes uh, and so blue eyed so I um, I was I was apprehensive uh, and in the beginning uh, not everyone was 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 very open and and you know you, you saw it, you saw it yourself William when we were at this uh, one of the supermarkets we went to uh, I'd I'd sort of come along with, with, a, with a, my microphone and 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 try and stop some of these um, uh, Trump supporters uh, presumed uh, presume uh, presumed Trump supporters and and they would just walk straight by or, or just ignore me so uh, so so that was uh, that was a little weird as well because you know I, I've grown up in, in in the UK and in France um, you know we. Racism is not is not that um, blatant. Uh, it's it's sort of people can be racist, but they'll they'll still uh, try and disguise it or or, or style it out. But uh, but uh, with, with some with some Trump supporters in the U.S., uh, I, uh, I I for the first time I, I felt uh, I felt my I, I, my skin color. I felt that okay, I, I'm different, and, um, and 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 this is it's not going to be easy to get a to get all of my uh, all of my questions um, answered, 
Uh, but uh, but I, I recall that William did suggest a very good um, a good technique. He said, "Change change your mask," because I was wearing a, a like a duck face mask, and he's he was like, "No wonder, <laughs> no wonder everyone's running away from you." So, so we switched masks, and the other one was 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 slightly uh, less intrusive, and 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 yeah, I managed to get some uh, uh, some answers afterwards. So, um, do you do you find that people in the United States versus Uganda versus the uh, area in England or London or Paris, mm -hmm. do you find the United States people more aggressive or more passive? More aggressive. Uh, in uh, terms of approach, when they talk to you, do they seem to have a, a more of an, uh, an aggressive attitude? Well, I think Americans, uh, sorry if this is a, um, a cliche, but you're also very, very loud. So, uh, so, that, so that, that can come across as being, being, being quite, quite aggressive. Uh, we're a bit more soft-spoken in in, uh, in in London and in Paris. People speak very quickly, um, but but no, I I found I found, uh, I, I, I found Americans also uh, to also be be quite warm. Uh, you know, I uh, I said to you that one 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 of my one of the big surprises of this trip of the trip was was my um, stay in Bedford, Pennsylvania, in in Trump Trump country, and <laughs> and uh, and people. Like I, I, I felt that I was out of place, but they, they were quite, uh, they were very welcoming. Um, so, so no, I, I didn't feel any uh, aggressivity uh, at all. And um, no, I, I'm not going to generalize. I, I think you know, um, each each, okay. each people is different. Individual. Uh, each individual okay. Different, but, uh, so, what do you do now exactly? Are you on TV? What are you doing now? What do I do now? So I, I work in, in radio, um, but uh, from time to time I'll, I'll go on our sister station, uh, France 24, and I might um, do like a live, uh, live set where I'll explain in depth uh, a, a, particular, a particular topic. So recently I was talking about the, the, youth, uh, the latest Uganda elections, which, uh, which have also uh, seen uh, the president uh, win yet again, but um, uh, uh, there's... there's ongoing allegations of a fraud and suspicion like the last election in 2016. Uh, so I, I came on France 24 and I was just basically uh, talking about um, talking about the climate of, uh, sort of repression that uh, that's all that's all many uh, opposition leaders basically arrested and, and un unable to uh, to campaign properly uh, and what that means for democracy uh, in uh, in Uganda. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis uh, my job really consists uh, consists of um, making a lot of interviews. So I'll um, uh, so uh, so uh, the last couple of days I I've, I've been looking a lot at the the coronavirus, uh, the impact for, for African countries. Uh, this weekend is the the African Union summit. So I was doing uh, some like analysis pieces, also looking ahead to the main stakes uh, of uh, of the summit. Uh, and so so I'll, I'll call analysts or um, or eyewitnesses and get uh, get sound bites, uh, and then I'll write mm -hmm. uh, write a report um, around these sound bites, and then maybe an article for the website. So uh, so yes, yeah, so a lot of a lot of calling, and then and then writing afterwards, and then I'll, I'll go uh, go live on radio and basically discuss what I've uh, what I've uncovered. So is Uganda in, U in Uganda was the election contentious also, or was uh, it just he just dominated and that was it? So the latest, the latest polls, or the ones in twenty sixteen? The latest ones. Oh yeah, they're, they're also very contentious. Uh, uh, in, in November, there were, there, were, there were riots that broke out. Um, maybe fifty people were killed because mm. the government uh, had a, uh, arrested um, the main opposition candidate, uh, the uh, the singer and deputy uh, Bobby Wine. Uh, he's been arrested uh, numerous times, and so his supporters uh, went out of the streets. They were, they were angry. They were campaigning. And uh, and the police basically retaliated uh, with, uh, with with, with uh, gunshots and um, and tear gas. So it, it was it's it's been a very violent campaign. And uh, on election day itself, the, the internet was sort of cut off, was shut down, and um, and the, the results trickled uh, finally came out maybe a week later. Um, and they weren't really the electoral commission has sort of struggled to justify uh, how it tallied its results so so yes there's a, there's a, there's a lot of suspicion and um 
and Bobby Wine has taken uh, has has launched a petition at the Supreme Court. But uh, Uganda being being Uganda, the uh, the courts are appointed by the government, so it's unlikely that they're going to actually listen to his uh, his appeal. So. Uh, so, so that's a little um, a little frustrating uh, as a journalist because uh, it's not just Uganda. Uh, every there's a, a lot of African countries where there, there are constant constant allegations of, of uh, um, vote rigging, fraud. Uh, the opposition uh, tries to contest, but but nothing ever never comes comes come, comes out of this, um, and and so it, it becomes really frustrating. You're like, well, okay. Uh, what's the point of having elections if uh, <laughs> if um, if they only serve to uh, rubber stamp um, an autocratic leader? Then you know, uh, right? What, yeah. So. Chris, Christina, can you tell us a little bit about the Black? You went to the Black Heath High. It's a private yeah. <laughs> school for girls. Yeah. Do you have to have a a certain IQ or a certain test score to get into that school? I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I did have to do um, uh, pre-entrance exams uh, to, to to get a uh, an asserted place. So, so my so I grew up uh, just with my mother. I didn't I didn't know my, my father, and so my mother didn't have a lot of a lot of money. So uh, so the only way of getting into um, uh, it, was, it was a very um, it was quite a pre prestigious school. Uh, so quite expensive uh, as well. So the only way for a, a modest um, people to get in was was through uh through um well, through a bursary or or, or passing uh, uh passing these exams so so that's that was my uh my uh, my entrance uh my entrance and my ticket to <laughs> to, to where i am now uh, uh the black Heath high school was 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 a very rigorous um um school uh, all about you know um being uh being excellent uh and being a uh, highly uh it was also quite a competitive so um I'm not sure if in, high, uh, if, if in future I'd, I'd like my children to, to to perhaps go be brought up in the same environment because um, I think now it, it's it's also important to learn that it's okay to to not always be successful and not always be uh, not always be uh, great. Uh, you know, you also have to learn to to fail. Uh, and actually, coming to France has has, uh, has been a great um, a great eye opener and learning curve because I. Uh, I, I've gone from failure to failure, but still, you know, still, still, still um, smiling like like Winston Churchill, uh, you know, once once said that uh, you know, the, the path to success is basically going from one failure to the next, and, and still, yeah, still, uh, still keeping a, a smile on your face. So, um, uh, so yeah, Blackie Pie. Uh, I've come a long way from Blackie Pie. Um, it's it's not a you know um, excellence on a daily basis. It's uh, it's yeah, learning, but. Uh, uh, but it's okay to make mistakes, and and uh, it happens. But you know, you're you're uh, you're, you're still enough, and uh, it doesn't um, it doesn't reduce your your worth or value in, in any way. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that great piece of insight. We have a lot of educators on the call. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> we have a lot of teachers, so I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. We're not going to um, hold you too, too, too long, Bill, Christina. Did you want to open up the, for, open up the chat room for any questions? Um, we, you can unmute yourselves at this time. Anyone have a question for Ms. Christina? Mrs. Christina? Not a question. This is Sister Price. We I, hear know this is going, I know this is going to sound a little whack, but Felice Dia de Reposo Madame Christine. Okay. <laughs> that was a weak way of saying happy Sabbath to Madame Christine. Okay. Oh. Um, Thank French you. is my second language. I, I took French in high school and I love the French language. I used to be really good at it, but I'm not around people that speak it, you know, um, often. And so, um, uh, I don't really have a question. I just have a comment from what I heard you say. It's just confirmation that when you are anointed by the Lord in whatever areas we go, mm -hmm. however people, uh, uh, um, uh, ideologies are, 
God will protect you. And I believe you are anointed of God and God is protecting you. He is ordering your footsteps. And, 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 and the uh, Bible tells us that no weapon formed against us will prosper. And I believe you are anointed. Praise God for you. Thank you, Sister Fire. You are welcome. <laughs> Any comments, any other comments or questions? Have you ever felt that your life is being threatened while you're out there? Uh, in, in France or on, on assignment? Anywhere, anywhere. Yeah, yeah in assignment. Uh, no, no, I mean, I think I mentioned that, that one experience in, in Uganda, mm -hmm. but, but, but generally I, uh, I, I I, I always feel that there's um, there's a protective uh, presence um, that's always there. So I uh, I, I can feel uh, perhaps stressed or, um, or or nervous about uh, you know maybe going on air and talking about a, a story that I haven't had time to prepare. But uh, but I, I I always know that God will deliver. So I I, I don't feel threatened in that way. I'm I'm. I, I feel threatened in the sense that I, I, I want it to go well and I, I don't want to uh, you know, put him to shame, but, 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 I, but I, I know he's, he's taking care of me, so I, I, I don't I feel any reason to, to, to doubt. Um, All right. Amen. So your faith has been built. Yes. As time has gone on, your faith has been building up. Yes. All yes. right. That's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. All right. Well, the Lord has been with you, apparently, because you've been through some stuff. So, you know, different places by yourself, countries by yourself. That's yeah. that's a serious undertaking, especially for a woman in today's <laughs> time. No offense, any ladies yeah. on the line. But, yeah, that's that's true. You know. And, and I, just want, I just want to say also that, you know, in terms of you know, building, building up your faith and just and just and just becoming the person that you know, God has chosen you to be, I mean, uh, it, it takes time. Uh, when I when I came out of a journalism school in in 20, uh, 2010, uh, I, I remember I was sort of you know, full of energy, uh, and I, well, I, was, I I'm hopefully I'm still full of energy today. But but I, I was really um, really impatient, and I wanted to. Uh, so I joined France twenty four. I started off uh, just uh, working as a video editor, and I wanted to to straight away. Uh, Go off, go off an assignment and be a be a be a, be a, a grand reporter, so like a uh, like a field reporter, a correspondent, uh, and I uh, and and basically I I, I pitched a story uh, which in the end was was never no one never got back to me. Or they said no, and and I was really uh, really angry. Um, I, I my my ego uh, had taken a knock, and, and I and I decided well you know this is not this isn't good good enough for me. I'm going to move on and go somewhere else and. And, and and I was just thinking about this today, thinking, you know, thank goodness that uh, <laughs> that God closed the door and, mm. and didn't let me go because I was uh, I, I was naive and uh, and uh, and I had no idea what I what I was doing at, at that point. So uh, and and so all of the experience that I went on to do afterwards is, is what is what's allowed me to be able to today, you know, at short notice, I, I can go on air and talk about whatever topic and and not you know not have a mental breakdown you know because god has god has been building uh my um endurance levels uh up for so long and um and, and even now you know but i work in french and it's you know it's not my first language and, I, and there's still a little uh, there's a little bit of um you know apprehension that you know will i be understood and, and am i good enough as my other colleagues uh you know god uh, god you know, allowed me for for several years when i was working in the english department to every once once every two months go on the uh, on, on one of our French debate programs and and talk for like maybe seven minutes about a topic and uh, and and it was always a uh, really intense and but it but it it allowed me to sort of have that uh, uh, become uh, have that familiarity familiarity and and, and start getting uh, you know relaxed and, and and used to being in the studio and then talking in French without you know uh, uh, feeling too too stressed and. And, and so like today, for instance, I, I've been up since seven. I was on air at eight talking about uh, um, COVID and, and Africa and uh, vaccination campaigns. And, and then I, later, on, later on, I was talking about um, writing a script uh, also in French about, um, about Bobby Wine taking on the 70 in Uganda. And then in the afternoon talking about 
an, an opposition candidate in Cameroon who's just been released. And then in the end, I finished talking about the African Union uh, summit tomorrow. And I'm thinking, whoa, you know, this is a uh, like huge, but, uh, but it, it's not because I, I've been doing it bit by bit for, for several years. And, uh, and so that sort of rehearsal period, period almost uh, has enabled me now to be able to take the spotlight, uh, you know, not, not for my own glory, but to, to, to show that God is, is glorified through me. Through our, Amen. I was going to say, right. but timing is, 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 you know, his timing is perfect. And, and that just, just trust, trust the process and trust, uh, and trust in him to, to, to deliver when, when, when the time is right. Amen. Amen. Thank That's you so amazing. much. Um, we are not going to hold you any longer. I just want to personally thank you for giving your time this evening. You have reminded us that we need to trust in the Lord and God's timing is always perfect. And you mentioned something about uh, uh, God closing a door, but when God closes doors, he always opens another one. Amen. And he will deliver us, but we must spend time with him. Yes. So I just want to... Can, can, can I just conclude with yes. about opening doors? Uh, I, I can't forget um, to mention my husband. Uh, I, the, the, the apartment where, I, I, where we live, I actually, he was my neighbor. And, uh, and one day I came home for, from work uh, exceptionally early. Uh, I always finish late, but one day, uh, that particular day, Something told me you need need to go home early. It's a beautiful day. Enjoy yourself. Uh, so I, I I leave leave work maybe at four p.m. I get home around maybe five or six, and uh, and, and 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 we have like two lifts in, in, in our in our building, and 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 I think so that somebody somebody is holding the lift open. So he's waiting for me. He, I think he hears my uh, my heels on the uh, on the uh, on the floor. So he. He, 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 he presses the, uh, the pause button, so I, I rush, he, I open the door and, and, I, I, and I meet uh, the man who later will, will be my husband. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, so, and basically, you know, he was holding, um, he was holding like music scores underneath his arm and, uh, and both, both of us sing actually. So, uh, so I was like curious, I was thinking, oh, are you, are you, are you a musician? You know, um, what, do you, what do you do? And he was like saying, well, he sings in free choirs including the choir at his church. And so I'm, th I'm ticking all the boxes in my head thinking, oh, great, he's a musician. You know, he, he goes to church, uh, you know, tell me more. And, and basically to cut a long story short, um, I, I asked him for, for help to read music because I, I'm not a very good music reader. And, uh, and I, had a, I had a performance uh, a few months later. And so he, he basically agreed to, to coach me and, and, and that's sort of how we, how we, how we wow. got together. And it was literally because <laughs> wow. uh, God brought me to this. Uh, I, I'd, I'd moved into the building. I'd been here for like three months. And three months later, I, I meet my husband in the lift. Uh, you know, his timing again was the right, the right one. So I just want to conclude wow. that. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for that. I know we have a few single ladies on here. <laughs> and so that uh -oh. is awesome. That just goes Amen. to show that God and his timing. Thank you so much. Will, at this time, if anyone, everyone, if you want to just unmute yourself, um, just say thank you to Miss Christina, and then we're going to close it out. Thank you, Christina, for coming on. Pretty appreciate it. Thank you so much. Très bien, merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci à toi. <laughs> All right. Thank you, William. <laughs> thank oh, you, Leslie. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. uh, and, uh, and, and until the next time in the U.S., uh, <laughs> or, right. or come to Paris, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, don't tell her. She be. <laughs> don't tell me. All right, ready. Ready. All right ready. Katrina. She ready. ready. Praise ready. God. Ready. I was there in, in Paris uh, uh, for a, a, a long time ago, but it's precious memories to me. Mm -hmm. Peace before I close. Thank you so much for, for having this presentation. I truly enjoyed it. I enjoy listening to women